quaeris, quot mihi basiationes tuae lespia sensatis superque? Quam magnus numerus libis harenae las arpiciferis jacet cirenis? Oraclum iois inter aestuosi et bati ueteris sacrum sepulcrum? Aut quam sidere multa contacet nox, fortios hominum vident amores. Tante basse multa basiare, ue sano satis et super catulos, quae nec per numerare curiosi possint, nec mala fascinare lingua. Now I'm going to give some notes regarding the pronunciation of the poem. Quairis, quot mihi basiationes tuae lespia sint sati superque. For basiationes tuae, make sure you read them together. Don't get in the habit of pausing at the end of the line. You want to pause according to syntactical pauses, but not just because it's at the end of the line. Um, for the name, it should be lesbia, not a Z sound, not lesbia, it should be lesbia. The R in superque should be trilled a little bit because it's R followed by the Q. Quam magnus numerus libis harenae las arpiciferis jacet cirenis. The in quam, the M at the end is pronounced. Often an M after a vowel is dropped, but because there is an M following it, it should be pronounced. For um, magnus, the N G, the G before the N becomes an NG sound, sort of mm, magnus, magnus. It's not magnus, it's magnus. For these two Greek names, there's a Y in Latin that comes from the Greek letter upsilon, and it's sort of Hard to pronounce, it's sort of like an U sound. So, libisai, kyrenis, kyrenis. Um, and at the end, for the pronunciation of this, take a look at Luke Renieri's wonderful video. I've given some recommendations at the end for where that is exactly. Libis harenai, the, the vowel, when you have uh, an H and then a vowel, the H is uh, not pronounced a lot, and so there would, it, it would be elided, so it would be libis harenai. And then in las uh, arpiciferis, again, because you have R followed by a P, it's las arpiciferis. Oraclum iois in terra istuosi et bati veteris sacrum sepulcrum. So here, with the three words, oraclum, sacrum, sepulcrum, the M is silent and the vowel before is nasalized. Um, with inter istuosi, the, because it's at the end of a word, followed by a vowel, it's inter. Then we have aut quam sidere multa contacet nox fortios hominum vident amores, tante basse multa basiare. So the um, quam sidere hominum vident, again, the M is silent and the vowel is nasalized. Um, with 
uh, an M U M before a T, the M was pronounced like an N, so it became kuntaket, tante. And then with fortivos, again, the R is trilled. Wesano sati set super catulos. Here, normally with elision, the final vowel was not pronounced or was often not pronounced. Here, um, usually when you have an est, e s t after, the e is elided. So it was probably pronounced catulost. Quae nec per numerare coriosi possint, nec mala fascinare lingua. In uh, per numerare, the R is trilled. Um, with curiosi possint, make sure you don't pause at the end of the line. And with lingua, the N before the G is pronounced as um, sort of an NG in anger. This poem is written in a meter called hendecasyllables. Hendecasyllables always have 11 syllables. Hendeca in Greek means 11. And there are a few different kinds of hendecasyllables, and this one is called fellation. Here, as you can see, the first two feet can be long or short. And then you have long, short, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, or long for the last one. And it sort of goes like dum, 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 da, da, dum, da, dum, da, dum, dum, something like that. And uh, the first two lines um, scanned in meter would be Quairi squot mihi bassiationes tuai lespia sin sati superque. And the, so that's the way it goes according to the meter. Um, in the normal prose accent or stress, um, it's a little bit different. You, you have a quairi squot Mihi, the, there the accent would be on the first syllable, uh, basiationes, tuai, with tuai, the stress normally would be on the first syllable, lespia, sint satis superque, with satis, the normal stress would be on the first syllable, satis, not satis. And, uh, there's an interesting debate here um, as to when we're reading poetry, to what extent should we read it um, stressing the meter or should we more emphasize the normal um, prose rhythm or stress? And... People have different opinions about that. Um, there is a very good article about that in a book by Mr. Sidney Allen in Chapter 6 in his book called Vox Latina. And uh, what I like his quotation here. He says, In the presence of these uncertainties, it seems inadvisable to dogmatize for one alternative or the other, and the choice must probably remain, as it may always have been, a matter of individual taste. Anyway, um, you will see in, if you listen to different videos, um, some people emphasize the meter more than, than others. Um, please take a look. I have learned a lot, a lot about how to pronounce Latin um, by Luke Ranieri 
of Scorpio Mar uh, Martianus. Um, please take a look at these videos. He has a couple of videos specifically about R, N, G, final M, and the Greekish Y, Upsilon. Um, there are links in the description to the video. Um, also, I've done a translation, another video you can check out that has um, my translation and some interesting cultural notes about the, the poem and some very nice images, I think. Um, I prefer my reading of the Latin in this one than that one, because um, that one I did oh, about six months ago. Anyway, enjoy.